if you have your Bibles this morning, uh, turn to the 12th chapter of the Gospel of Mark. The Lord's been dealing with me all week on this, and, and uh, I've enjoyed studying it and praying over it, and I'll just be honest with you, this, uh, this may not be a, a very popular message, with a lot of people, I'm not saying it's the doom and gloom, but uh, we don't hear a lot of this anymore, and, and uh, it's something we used to hear a lot of. Now, first of all, let me make this statement clear. We are saved by grace through faith. That's what Paul said, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. It's not of our works. It's nothing we can do. But God, uh, even in the Old Testament, and uh, throughout the new through his uh, son Jesus, lays out some things that we must do. It's not a bargaining chip. It's not something we can put up and take down as we like it, but it's laid out for us as God's people. Now, it's our prayer here at Brookside that if you're here this morning and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, it is our wish and our prayer and our hope that you would come to the acceptance of God's dear Son Amen. through Calvary. That's our, that's our hope this morning. And what I'm about to read, you can find in two other gospel accounts in Matthew and Luke, but we'll not get into that this morning. But Mark chapter number 12, we'll begin reading in verse 28. I know a lot of times you hear you, uh, not only me, but other preachers and uh, evangelists and missionaries saying the Bible says. I uh, want to take time out for just a second right here. Whatever the Bible says is, is fact. Amen. Amen. It's not opinion. It is fact. It is Amen. chiseled in the cornerstone of eternity. So if we're basing our life on something as God's children this morning, base it on God's word because he said this word will stand when nothing else will. Uh, he said, I honor my word even above my name. So I asked you this morning, what do you base your life on? The Bible says in verse 28, And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, he asked Jesus, Which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandment is, Hear, O Israel, he's talking to the nation of Israel, The Lord, our God, is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy, uh, thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. The second is like, namely this, thou shalt, boy, this is a big one right here, love Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth. For there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after that durst ask him any questions. Let us pray. Father, as we look to your word this morning, I pray, Lord, that you'd make it alive because we know it's living, it's breathed out with uh, the pure word of God. Lord, I pray that we'd open our hearts and our minds and the very inner part of our souls, Lord, to your word this morning. And I pray, Lord, as we enter this season that we call Christmas, Father, I pray, Lord, we really look to you are the reason, Lord, as some say, for this season. Lord, you're not only the reason for this season, you're the reason for every season. Father, we don't just need to, to dwindle it down to just one part and time of the year. Lord, we need to celebrate it all the year through. Now, Father, let us look to your word this morning and learn and grow in it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 
We find here uh, the other gospel accounts. Uh, Mark says it was a scribe that stood up. The other accounts say it was a lawyer. Now, we all have our opinions about lawyers. Somebody say amen right there. But I want you to notice what Jesus does when the lawyer or the scribe stands up. And he asks him, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus doesn't. He all around or giving nothing. He answers the scribe or the lawyer with the law. Now, we live under grace, not the law, but it's a great schoolmaster. And I want you to notice what the Lord Jesus says here. He said the greatest thing is, notice what the Bible says. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. That's not a disciple speaking. That's not anybody speaking other than the Lord Jesus Christ, the very God of God, the Son of God, 100% man and 100% God. He is who he is. There is one Lord the Bible says. Amen. And that's who answers him. He said, this is the first commandment, that you love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Boy, that's powerful this morning. The Lord showed me something in studying this and praying through this this week. If you can look to the person beside you, in front of you, your spouse, your child, your neighbor, whatever, and you can say, I love you more than Jesus Christ this morning, you're in a bad fix. That's not popular preaching, preacher. I didn't say it was. But it's right preaching. If you can look at your wife and say, honey, I love you, and you love her more than Christ himself, you're in a bad fix. You can look at your husband and say, I love you, and that love exceeds what your love for Christ is, you're in a bad fix. He said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. What's in your heart this morning? Sure, it's a, a festive time of year, a, a celebration time of year, but what's in your heart? Did you get up this morning giving thanks unto God for just breathing? I'm not talking... One thing I think we forsake as God's people, we get in a routine of praying and we, we say some repetitious single prayer for 30 seconds, day in and day out, and we're in a bad fix. You know the only reason that God the Father sent His Son to Calvary? There was no other reason than to have fellowship and communion with you and I. Amen. No other reason. He didn't come to make the mountains pretty green and lush. He didn't make the, the rivers and the waters and the seas and the oceans blue and, and all the, the grass green. He came because he loved you this morning. Amen. And there's not but one thing that he desires from his people, and that is for us to love him. Amen. Love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. That's all of it. I don't know about you, but I don't I, I don't need a dictionary. Or my concordance to look up the definition of all. That's every, that's every corner. That's every circle. That's every innermost thing of our heart. That we look at Jesus and say, Lord, I love you. I love you. You say, well, preacher, I've been through a lot. Most of us have. Or are. Or getting ready to. Go through some things that we've never gone through before. But at the end of the day, we ought to be able to say, Lord... I still love you. Amen. I still love you. Lord, I don't understand why. Why we go through all these things as, uh, as children of God. I do. Paul said that I might know the fellowship of his sufferings. Acts in the 14th uh, chapter in the 22nd verse says, confirming the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. We must. Do you love it with all your heart this morning? Now listen, I understand that when people walk out that door, somebody's going to forget what the preacher's uh, been given from God. Five minutes, maybe 50 seconds, I don't know, but somebody in here, this is going to, the Lord showed me this this week, somebody needs this. Do you love it with all your heart? What if you were like Job and you lost everything? Everything, and the only thing that you had left outside of God was a, a wife that was just about crazy and had every right to be. And she looks at her husband and she says, Curse God 
and he died. He said, oh, foolish one. The Lord, right in the back of the middle of the text in, in chapter 19 of Job, he says, I know that my Redeemer will end. And I know even though the skin worms may eat upon my flesh in the latter day, he'll stand. Boy, that's something. No matter what we go through, church, he's worthy of our love. You know what we you know what we need? We need to show God that we love him. How do we do it? We get in his word and we pray. You know why I believe God's not sent revival to the nation of America again? Because God's people have forsaken to pray. I believe that. Love me with all your heart. We're more worried about what's on the grocery list uh, this week than what God's word says. Preacher, I carry a Bible everywhere I go. I don't care. That don't I, listen. I carry a Bible everywhere I go too. He said, "You better put, hide your word in my heart that I, that I might what not sin against thee." Listen, I got all kinds of Bibles. Look, I tried to be festive this morning. I even bought one of the red ones. <laughs> I got Bibles on top of Bibles. Lord bless me with them. But just because I got them, don't mean anything unless I get in them. Amen. I like a worn Bible. Bible that the pages ain't stuck together from, from the dirt and grit from just laying on a shelf. But you can fan through it like a deck of cards, honey, and it'll just breathe to you. He said, love me with all your heart. When's the last time was, uh, that our love was shown in our prayer life? Uh, listen to a man named David Brainerd that died at the age of 28 years old. That was one of the greatest prayer warriors of our day and our hour, and he died at 28 of tuberculosis. And it said that when they found him, that he was in the middle of a snowstorm and had been praying outside in a snowdrift. And the disease of tuberculosis had, had so torn his body that he actually spit out part of his bronchial tube. And he died on his face praying. Talked about a man there a few Sunday nights ago about a man that loved God so much that he died from a... a just all of a sudden, and the autopsy result showed this. The doctor said, I can't explain it. I don't know how it happened, but this is the only conclusion I can come to is that this man was so in love with God that his heart, he spent so much time on his face praying that his heart literally moved from the left to the very center of his chest. can be from where he spent so much time bowed out to God. Do we love him? He said, this is the first thing. To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. I'm not talking about this old heart that pumps blood. It's going to wire out one day. But there's a heart down in the inner part of me that the only reason that it lives is because of Christ Jesus and his love for us. Do you love him? I want to give you some Bible this morning. I think Bible still let's, you don't got to turn, but I'm going to give you a lot of Bible this morning. Jesus referred back to the law. That's why Jesus came. And we'll get to it in a minute. He didn't say, I come to condemn the law, but I come to fulfill the law. Amen. It wasn't the law that was messed up. It was God's people who were messed up. We couldn't live up to the standard of God. And Christ said, I'll be that standard. And can I say he was sufficient enough? Amen. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 6, 5, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and all thy mind. Matthew in the 5th chapter said, Think I not come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass one jot, or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever there, therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of God, or in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of God. He said it's great to teach on them, to teach and to learn. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, he shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's New Testament Bible, not old. Acts 24, 14 says, But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call hearsay, 
so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and the prophets. That's Acts, Acts 24. That's after Acts 2, by the way. Romans chapter 2 says, For there is no respect of persons with God. For as many as have sinned without the law shall also perish without the law, and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. The word of God. For when the Gentiles, no, verse 13 says in Romans chapter 2, For not the hearers of the law are just before God. Not the hearers, but the doers of the law shall be justified. The, the doers. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these, having not the law, are a law unto themselves. Can I ask you a question? If you know somebody that's agnostic or atheist or whatever you want to call it, and they say, you ask them the question, why, why does a human being, for the most part, not want to do harm to another? You know the first thing they say? Because it's morally wrong. Well, wait a minute, you just said morally wrong. Where's that moral come from? Come from the foundation of the world when God put his law upon the hearts of men. He told us it's wrong. Amen. He told us it's wrong. We know, not because we, we have some great pattern of revelation made to our minds, it's because God told us it's wrong. Amen. Friend, I'm going to tell you something this morning. One of these days, we're all going to stand before a Christ holy God alone. We're not going to be there with our brothers or sisters or wives or whatever. We're going to stand right in front of the judgment seat of God or the great white throne, whichever you so choose. And we'll give an account of everything we've ever done. If we're Christians, in his service or not for his service, if we're lost, we'll give an account for everything we've done and trample underfoot the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll stand in judgment. Now, I don't know about you, but I've kind of run this through my mind a few times. I don't like Brother Leonard Reagan here used to say, I don't know about you, but I don't like the idea of standing before uh, the crowd that's going to be there that day. Moses is going to be there. Noah's going to be there. Elijah's going to be there. Elijah's going to be there. Uh, Job's going to be there. Jonah's going to be there. Micah's going to be there. Nahum's going to be there. Habakkuk's going to be there. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John's going to be there. The Apostle Paul's going to be there. And we're going to stand alone on that day and give an account for us. Let me tell you what, honey, it's not going to be a fun day. Amen. And it's going to last for a long time. This ain't something you're going to come up and you're going to pick another. We're going to stand in judgment. It may take eons of time to get through us all. It'll probably take thousands of years just to get through my mess. But we'll give an account for it. He says, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Our heart. That's where love comes from, by the way. If you're here this morning and you know not the Lord Jesus, you cannot love your neighbor. Love your family or love your church like you're supposed to love them because you don't know nothing about it. Because the Bible says God is love. God is love. Amen. Love with all, look what it says. And with all thy soul and with all thy mind, verse 30, and with all thy strength, this is the first commandment. What's running through your mind this morning? What's running through it? We've been here all day just what's been through my mind in the first four hours of the day since I've been up for five. But he said, with all of it. You see, I found this, if, if the Lord's on our hearts and he's on our minds, there's not room for anything else. There's not room for the troubles of the world in our mind. There's not, a, there's not room for the where's the devil in our mind. It said resist the devil and he'll flee far from you. The only way you can resist him is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you don't have the power to. Brother Allen said one time he made the mistake of saying, talking to the devil, is that all you got? You can ask him after church, he ain't never asked that again. Because the devil had plenty, didn't he, Brother Allen? That's right. Had plenty. The only way, even the archangel Michael asked for God's permission before he took on himself. You love him with all your heart and all your mind this morning. Say all your strength. You see, I find that so uh, not funny, but just, just, it just sets 
us free because our strength is drawn from him. I went, me and my wife went to a home this week that a dear sister lost her husband tragically. And I loved her response. Not naming no names. But she said, Preacher, when you get home in your time, you give me some Bible for the things I'm feeling? When you get time, I said, well, we'll make time. She said, because I don't want to be mad at God. But I do know what he wants to say about it. These things I'm feeling and these things I've gone through, and I want to know what he said. And she said, and that's what I'm going to base all this on is what the Bible says. She didn't say, I want to know what the preacher thinks. Or I want to know what the deacon says. Or I want to know what the church uh, is all up in. She said, I want to know what the Bible says. Amen. Boy, that touched me. Do you love him this morning with all your heart? And all your soul? And all your mind? And all your strength? Do you love him? Do you love him? I know this ain't popular, but listen to what the Bible says. Uh, continuing on in Romans chapter 2 and verse 15 which showed the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts that mean while accusing or else excusing one another in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel, Paul said. Romans 7, 16 says, If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law, that is good. For I delight in the law of God, Paul says, after the inward man. Paul said this to owe no man anything but to love one another. A lot of times when I do a gravesite, I refer to this passage of scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15 and verse 56. It said the sting of death. Death. Death is a real thing this morning. Amen. It said the sting of death is sin. We're all going to die. Hello. Unless the Lord Jesus comes back on a cloud someday in the eastern sky, we know he's going to, but if it's in our lifetime, what a day that'll be. If not, we'll go by day. Now, we don't know how that's going to be. I don't know when it is. Don't know when it is. Good care of it. Might be today, might be 40 years from now. But it said the sting of death is sin. Sin's the reason we're going to die. Sin's the reason we're going to be put in the ground one day. Sin's the reason Christ had to come to Calvary. Sin's the price that had to be paid with the precious blood of the Lord Jesus. Sin was the atonement that had to be made for when that night in the mercy seat. Sin is why we're here today uh, with gray hair and feeble bones and feeble minds. Sin has caused a lot of trouble and the Lord Jesus is the only way. It's the only way. It's a sting. You, there ain't nobody sitting in these pews that says in some way that death has not stung you in one way or the other. It stings, it hurts, it burns. But there is hope. The very next verse says this, but thanks be to God which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know what the strength of sin is? The Bible says it's the law. 1 John, we call him Little John from time to time. Chapter 5 says, Whosoever believes on the Lord Jesus Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. But this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. John finishes out in verse 3 and says, For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Those commandments are good to live by. We're not saved by, but can I say this? We are to live by. To love thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, and all thy soul, and all thy strength. Can I ask you a question? Miss Cindy, you come on, I'm about to I want to ask you a question. 
I thought about the men of God in the Bible. said Enoch walked with God. He just walked with him. And God called him home. He didn't even have to suffer that. Elijah was called up in a chariot of fire because he's so close to him. They loved him. You ever thought about Peter? Now, I want to show you something here. There are 12 disciples. One of them was the devil, the Bible says. But there were only three that got to go to the mountain. Peter, James, and John. Now, old Peter knew what it was to fail God, did he not? He said this. He said, I'll, I'll go with you even unto death, Lord. And the Lord said, you'll deny me three times before the cock crows. That's what he said. And after his resurrection, they came to him and he said, go tell my disciples and what? And Peter. And he got Peter along and he said, y'all going to get this. It might be tomorrow, but you're going to get this. He said, Peter, do you love me? Amen. He said, Lord, you know I love you. He said, feed my lamb. He said, Peter, do, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know I love you. He said, feed my sheep. He said, Peter, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. He loved him. First John, that's John the disciple, said was the disciple whom Jesus loved. And I believe he loved Jesus, don't you? When he was on Calvary, he looked and he said, John, you take care of mom until I come back. He loved him. Is this Christmas season going to be about all this, this hustle and bustle and all this decor and all this? Are we just going to, as God's people, get love with him all over again? I want to tell you what, I can care less what's going on in D.C. this morning. I don't care what's going on in Richmond this morning or tomorrow morning, but I do know everything's okay in my Father's house, in the throne room of our God. Everything is perfect. Everything is settled. And he doesn't need your opinion or mine. For it's been set since the foundations of the world. And we'll just love him. He said he'd show us all things. Amen. Amen. Do we love him? Oh, sure, we'll go home and we'll put up every stocking and light bulb and Christmas tree in five counties. And we'll stick a little angel or star on top and we'll say, boy, it's Christmas time. But I want to tell you what if we'll gather around a place called Calvary. Honey, my salvation didn't come uh, at the manger scene at Bethlehem. And it came to a place called Galgotha, where my Savior died so that I might celebrate Christmas his, uh, on the 20th, 2019 of this year. That I can celebrate because he sent his son that I might have life. Do you love him? He said, this is the first commandment. If you can't do this, you can't do none of the others. I am so sick and tired of superficial Christianity that I've had up to here with all the hustle and bustle of religion. I had about an hour conversation with a cousin of mine, and, I, 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 and we talked about, I promise you the Lord's going to let me break the traditions of men. I feel more at home in a gumbo down vest and a flannel shirt this morning than I ever have in a suit and tie. Jesus Christ, we got this persona. Uh, you can't have that in the church house. Baloney. Jesus was never wore nothing that his people didn't wore. And sometimes he wore less. He didn't come in no extravagant garb. That's Old Testament. That's in the temple. He came as Lord and as meek and riding the donkey. Somebody said that right there. He came to where we was at because we couldn't get to where he was at. And he became who we was so that we might be able to get to him. Amen. 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 We got traditions. We, we can't sing these, this song. We can't do that thing. Or we can't say that. Hello. If it's in that Bible, we'll do it. Or you can drive me out of town on a rail. But we'll do it. Because it's Bible. It's what he said, not what David said. Or anybody else in here. It's what God said. We'll do it. So I ask you this morning, will you love me? Oh, preacher, I love you. Do you? 
I want to show you something this morning. This man was born in 1805 on September the 27th. And he died on, he died on March the 10th, 1898 at the age of 92. He was born in Germany and he, he died in Bristol, England. He cared for over 10,000 orphans. Opened 117 schools and educated over 120,000 children and never asked for a dime. Never asked for it. Let me tell you, I'll give you two quotes and I'm done. He said, I know what a loving and gracious, bountiful being God is. From the revelation which he has been pleased to make of himself in his holy word, I believe this revelation I also know from my own experience the truth of it. And therefore I was satisfied with God. Are you satisfied this morning? You will not be satisfied outside of God. I delighted myself in God. And so it came that he might, that he gave me the desire of my heart. This is what he closed with. This is the point I'm to with me and my family's ministry and the ministry here at Brookside. He you either for me or you against me, but I'm going to wear it out there because he said it best. There was a day when I died. There was a day when I died. Died to my self-opinions, my preferences, my taste and my will. Died to the world, its approval or censure. I died to the approval or the blame even of my brethren and or my friends. And since then, I have studied only to show myself approved unto God. I'm tired of the church. I just want to fall in love with Jesus. Amen. Now you might not want to, but that's where I'm at. I, I don't care. I'm tired of getting the phone call saying, Preacher, what time service? And I'll tell them, and they'll say, well, is there a dress code? I don't care this time. I'm tired of people calling me and saying, well, I, I hope they don't look at me for who I, I Just come. I'm sick and tired of just the world. We need more Jesus back in the church. Well, we're not sure our life to. Listen, there's a, Brother Jeremiah said this, if all the church houses across the entire world were full to capacity this morning, there's still enough people that are lost and dying and going to hell because we put man's traditions in the way of God's precepts. Amen. Just love him. Just love him. That's what he said. Just love him. I can care less what you said about somebody. I don't come to your preacher. I'm sick and tired of all that. If it don't concern God, it don't concern me or this church. The Bible says love your neighbor. You know what that name is? Right now, Brother Nate, uh, my is Brother Randy. Brother Gail's my neighbor. Brother Hunter's my neighbor. Anybody I come in contact with today is my neighbor. It don't matter what they, if they're lost to say, that's my neighbor. And if we're going to win him to Christ, we're going to do it through the love of God. George Mueller said that, and he was just an humble old man of God. I'm tired of the, the, the ritzy, artsy, well, hello, of all the world in the church today. We just need more Jesus. Amen. And a lot less faith. Listen, I can care less as long as the lights are on, the missionaries are taken care of, and they deserve every dime. Listen, we're not in the money making business. It's a season of giving. And if the Lord tells us to give, we're going to give. I don't care if we've got to postpone this or postpone that. If it's to take care of the work of God, that's what we're going to do. Because He loved us enough to trust us with Him. Do you love Him? Thank you. Would you come? Everything that wrong.